On this video, I'm going to review the Lumberjack SCMS 210SB single bevel compound miter saw from Lumberjack UK. So the main features of this saw is it's a single bevel with a 210mm sliding function. It has a laser guide. Uh, it's made from aluminium, has a 70mm depth of cut. 1500 watt motor it has adjustable depth cutting as well so you can make um, grooves or half lap joints and in a nutshell I think it's a really good saw so I've had this saw for about nine or ten months or so um, and it's my second mitre saw that I've had um, I had a much cheaper one and I knew there was always going to be a difference between um, a really cheap tool and a more expensive one, uh, though this is um, £99.95 on the Lumberjack website, so it's not an expensive tool uh, by any means. Um, and there is a difference. I think you can have too cheap a tool, um, but I find Lumberjack tools to be sort of a nice, happy medium. Uh, for somebody that's not a professional and doesn't want to spend money on professional tools like me and um, the whole point of this channel is is aimed at people like me uh, where we don't have quite as much choice uh, in in the UK as maybe they do you know across the pond in the states um, but I do I do recommend lumberjack tools and also their customer services um, as emailed back into uh, regarding another issue and they were just absolutely fantastic so I do you know I've only got nice things to say um, but I have done a number of reviews and not everything is um, you know it's amazing um, and I am not affiliated with them at all so I'm of the review anyway um, so this is the saw this is obviously as you can see quite well used um, it's a single bevel uh, which does mean that you are limited um, you can only do that one way but you can flip your workpiece uh, most of the time I think so it doesn't stop me uh, so it does slide and that uh, goes to 210 millimeters um, for the cut depth which is quite a lot and you know I quite often flip work over once I've cut through uh, halfway through the wood you know if it's um, something that will fit on the mitre saw and I can cut it because um, I just prefer cutting on it um, so I've extended the fence there with um, you know a, sort of a sacrificial fence or to extend it so I can put stop blocks on and it works great um, I, occasionally I replace the the boards that I, I screw into it but repeatable cuts on by using a stop block is quite a big thing for me I don't like measuring so uh, that's really useful so straight out the box this was square I never had to actually adjust the fence I don't know whether I got lucky with it uh, but you can see there still square um, and that uh, little engineer square is definitely um, dead on and uh, perfect because I might saw that's not square is is utterly useless um but yeah dead on never had any issues with it uh so this is obviously set at 90 degrees but you can go to 45 either way and it's got this handy feature so you just turn the dial there and then it's got um sort of a trigger that you flick up to quickly move it and you can dial into um common um, measurements uh, angles on it uh, obviously as it's my so it is for angles and I find these to be quite accurate and it's so quick and easy to flick to them that you know you don't mind doing it on my old saw it was so difficult to get the angle right I just never wanted to knock it out of um, you know 90 degrees because of how long it takes to get back in but there's it's got its own like stop on it so you can't 
not get it back to 90 degrees it just goes back in the slot and it's squared up again so that is a massive feature and for such a cheap saw as well I think it's great so these are the holes on the fence when you get this saw or when you see pictures of the saw there's actually stickers covering that so you can't tell and sometimes you have to drill through it yourself um, you don't need to on this it comes with two on each side uh, I took one of the um, extension fence things that I put on it before just to um, show those holes but I always have them on anyway and yeah works great I replace them now and again and you can just screw in from the back dead easy mine did also well they all come with a laser my laser doesn't work anymore unfortunately which didn't really last long since I've had it for 10 months or so and it stopped working after maybe six I did find it quite useful um, just for if I was making depth cuts um, with the stop on it you know it's quite quick and easy to see but I do miss it but it's not the end of the world and I've you know I could write to a lumberjack I suppose uh, because I could never find anything on the internet to find how I could replace it but it's not been that big a deal uh, for me to be bothered doing it so this is the depth stop and you just pull this out and adjust that little knob um, and I preset it to this so dead quick and easy to do if you want to make uh, like a, a half lap joint or something and I'll demonstrate one on this um, later on and then if you like me just shove it out of the way and you can get back to your full depth of cut in case you mess your cut up and end up needing to cut some more wood and starting again so I really like that so one of the safety features that this saw actually has is this blade guard which does go fully around it it's just my shelf and dust bag gets in the way there um it is made of plastic but it, it doesn't feel like cheap plastic and it you know it does the job it keeps it completely contained and the only way to actually move that out of the way is to pull the little trigger on the handle so that it actually moves it and you can then pull it down as you can see from where the handle is it is I suppose for a right-handed person um, it's just sort of on the, the one side where it would make it awkward trying to operate this with your left hand obviously that's not a problem for me as I'm right-handed but if you were a lefty you might want to get a saw that's you know sort of got a different angled handle on it this saw also comes with two side extension rails, uh, one for each side that just screw in like so. Uh, they do go in a bit further, I didn't put them in properly when I was um, filming this. But I don't use mine, they do move a little bit, not as much as that if you actually screw them in properly to be fair. But they are still slightly lower than the bed of the saw there. so. Not ideal. Um, if you're building a mite station anyway for this, you, you you probably wouldn't need them. They're okay for when you um when you are putting down some three by twos or something, uh, two by fours, and it it does the job enough to support the wood. Additionally, it does come with this clamp which works on both sides, and I very rarely use this, but it has worked out quite handy when I have used it. So there's a slot on the back of the saw on each side and you can just sort of twist it out of the way when it's not in use. I just tend to sort of move mine completely and then only use it when I actually really need it. Um, but it's got a quick release thing and it screws down and you know just a nice little extra feature that the saw has. So moving on to the dust collection on this saw, it comes with this little dust bag um, which catches some uh, dust as you can see there, um, but I don't think anybody ever finds these particularly useful. It, um, it misses a lot and it does make an awful lot of dust mess. I always, um, well I do ha actually have it hooked up to a shop vac temporarily and I didn't see that much of a difference or an improvement with it I still got dust everywhere and then it was just a pain switching it on and off just because of my setup uh, so I abandoned it 
Um, but the dust collection is not great, but I don't think they are in most mitosaurs. So to utilise the bevel on this saw, there's a knob at the back that you twist. Uh, that's it there, this red one. And what you do is you just twist that to loosen it off. And then you can bevel the saw, which bevels to the left. Uh, it goes up to 45 degrees, I think. And then you just tighten it off and you can operate the saw. And you can use that with, you know, as a compound mitre as well. Uh, so it's really easy to activate and take on and off. Um, the wire, it doesn't get in the way of the blade, but just be mindful of it being there. If the fence was off, um, you actually just adjust it with these, these two bolts, one on either side of the fence, and you just adjust it with an Allen key, loosen it off, square it up with um, a square, and it adjusts that way. So I'll just demonstrate a cut on the saw. So I've got a piece of a dig bow here, um, which is some hardwood, and I'll just cut it. So it cuts through it really easily, no problems. There's a little bit of tear out on the back there, um, but there is quite a big gap. Um, I do need to make a zero clearance for this. Um, and also the blade's been on this. Uh, this is the original blade that I got with it. But it's perfectly square, and that's what I want on my saw to do. So happy with the cut. It cuts fantastic, and there's very little chip out there than that there. So I'll try some pine. So same again, very little tear out on it um, for a 10 month old blade. And I do use this an awful lot because I prefer to use a mitre saw than a table saw if I can because my table saw is rubbish. So it cuts great. I forgot to film doing some uh, actual mitre cuts, um, which I should do, but it works great for them. So here's the mess that it makes with no dust collection on. Uh, this is just letting it fly out the back of the machine and obviously an awful lot misses the bag. That was only from two very small cuts. So be mindful, uh, it does make a mess, this saw, but if you use dust collection or build something proper to collect it in, I'm sure that would be a lot better. I'm just not very prepared. So I think the depth stop is a really good feature on this saw. And I've used it quite a number of times actually to create um, half lap joints so I bought some new clamps recently and I need to just extend this so I've just done one and I'll just show you how quick it is to do the other so just to show how quick and simple this is so I just need to adjust the depth stop which is that there and that's the knob that you screw down now, I've already set this to the depth that I need for this um, this rack um, just to get it like that so just use a screwdriver to tighten it up because I don't want it to come loose and accidentally cut through all of the wood and I'll just move that out of the way and now you can see it stops there which will give us the perfect depth that we need for this so when you're doing a half lap joint on a mitre saw, it's got a tendency to curve uh, because of obviously the blade on it, it's, it's going to have an arc. So you need to mitigate that and put a bit of wood there in front of it and that will just get rid of that curve.
So, a fairly decent cut. It's quick and easy to do. Um, I know I should stop the saw um, before moving it, etc. But just trying to show it quick. I did get a little bit of tear out on the back of it, but you know, I can easily clean that up. Um, and I've got a slight curve because I didn't really use a thick enough piece of wood uh, to completely mitigate that, but it's easy enough to do. It's just a quick demonstration. But that's how quick it is to do like half lap joints or, you know, change the depth of the cut. And then you just take your screwdriver and flick it out of the way. And there you go. Saws back to normal. So I never actually did make any footage of cutting mitre cuts, which is daft for a mitre saw review. But I have done them in the past and, you know, I've, I've got them completely 90 degrees. So can't complain. Um... So, yeah, all in all, I think this is a great saw. I think I've come across a brand that, um, you know, I think people try out and probably agree that it's a really good, you know, manufacturer for a weekend woodworker or somebody that doesn't want to spend a, a fortune on professional tools. And I'm really happy with my lumberjack tools for the most part. Um, they do what they're supposed to do so I hope you find this useful uh, but with anything when buying tools I would say just do some research and you know look for videos of the tool in action so you can see for yourself but hopefully this will have um, you know if you're a bit indecisive or thought of buying a lumberjack my saw or some other lumberjack tools and you've been umming and ahhing Take it from me, they're definitely worth the money that you're paying for them. So, thanks very much for watching.